Alright, howdy there folks, and welcome back to Let's Play Destroy All Humans 2 with the fewest amount of shots possible challenge. I am Big B4, and in this episode we're going to try to make it through all five main Elbion missions with the fewest shots possible. Um, so we're going to get into it and start with the first mission, which is No Pox, Please, We Are British, in which we must go and fight Agent Orinchov in the abandoned tunnel system. So in this, I found it pretty easy just to free and love somebody and take a agent just to get into the abandoned sewer tunnels like really easy just to get to the boss fight room and what i did here was well, i skipped the data core because we don't need the anal probe of course because we're not shooting anything um take two kgb agents in with us to do the shooting for us you know do some damage to orange chav in his first uh, attempt i guess um so what happened here was these two kgb agents uh were fighting orange chav for us while i was trying to use these barrels to do damage to orange chav uh, but the thing I found, though, was that uh, shooting the barrels or pushing the barrels at Orinchov or any of these other objects um, did almost no damage. Like, maybe it did a tiny bit or something, but it did, like, no damage at all. And there's not enough objects in that room to really, you know, do enough damage to him anyways, as you can see here. Um, so I needed to get call in some backup, as basically if the agents in there die fighting Orinchov, it's kind of over. You need to restart. Um, so I called in the military here, and then I'm going to zoom in on this one soldier here. If you have the, if the soldier has the ammo pouches, like right there, they have a really good machine gun with a high rate of fire that can do a ton of damage to Orinchov. Um, so I used these soldiers here, brought them in just as some more backup for the KGB agents. And as you can see here, I free loved everybody, but this also affects Agent Orinchov. He will stop and dance too. So this creates an interesting dynamic in the boss fight in which if you use free love, it kind of activates a weak point in Agent Orinchov that like never really happened before if you do this mission normally. Um, you disable Agent Orinchov and it allows the uh, soldier you're using to open fire on Orinchov while he cannot attack. Um, as we're going to see here, like that. But I was stupid here, and I got in the middle of his fire and got killed. Uh, and I also found out then, if you die during the boss fight, the soldier will be despawned, and Orinchov will have full health. So I'm going to show off some more fails here. As you can see, my soldier had almost no health. Orinchov had a full health, or almost no health too. So I did the free love thing. I was about to win, and then bam! Just like that, the soldier's dead, and Agent Orinchov is dancing on me, on my failure. Um, and then this one... Uh, I had something come up where I needed to go, and I didn't want you guys thinking I was cheating or something, so I just restarted here. Um, but yeah, as we can see, it really changes the dynamic of this mission here. Uh, if you just bring in some extra humans to help and disable Orinchov like that. Um, and then in this mission, I got, or my last attempt here that I did, I got super duper lucky here with how things worked out. So I brought the soldier with the high rate of fire over next to me here. And let the uh, KGB agents fight them, which they they were doing quite a bit of damage over there. But then I free love, or well, I use protect obviously first. But then I use free love here, and it this guy look at look at this fire he's doing to uh, Agent Orinchov here. Agent Orinchov can do nothing about it too. Um, but you guys get the idea now, so I'm gonna kind of like I guess skip around during the fight because I think I put it on my channel like a couple months ago, just showing the whole fight off if you guys want to see it. Um, it, it's really cool. It really changes how the fight actually works when you're not just using the anal probe and stuff. But it does take a lot longer. It took me about an hour to get one successful attempt in killing Orinchov. And then we see Ponzinbi clapping, and he was hiding in the corner the whole time when he could have helped us, and he could have shot Orinchov because he's got infinite health in this mission. Um, but that might just be some foreshadowing of things to come. Um, and then we see our brave soldier friend here uh, gets infected, and we can't do anything to help him, so I felt kind of bad there uh, that he did all the work for us. Um, so yeah, and usually what you do in this mission is you'd fight all the agents with uh, Ponzinbi here, um, but what I do instead is I run past all the agents, exit the tunnel, and if you come to the surface and just follow the pink marker here like this, you don't have to fight any of the agents, and you don't have to waste any time um with pawns and be fighting the agents this makes the mission much or go go by much faster when you can't fire any weapons i actually used to use this tactic um all the time when i was younger because i actually kind of struggled with this portion of the of the mission when i was younger fighting all the agents with uh, pawns and be 
Um, so you just follow the marker all the way up, you go to the beginning of this tunnel system, and you meet Ponds and be right in the tunnels there, and you just follow them up. You just follow them up, and just like that, the first mission is complete, with zero shots fired. And that brings us on to the second Elbion mission, uh, in which we have to go to the Big Babushka to investigate why the KGB agents are putting it there. And it ends up being a trap to infect a bunch of humans with the spores. But luckily for us, this mission is, I would say, much easier than the, uh, the uh, first one with uh, Orange Hav because uh, the person who's going to do all the killing for us is going to be Natalia, and Natalia is invincible in this mission. Um, so we just let her fight all the infected humans for us here. Uh, and when she kills one, uh, what we can do is jump into the spores because that will destroy the spores. Because uh, Crypto just breathes in the green gas, and I guess it has no effects on him besides a little like sting on his health. Um, so in this fight here, this, the first like I guess half of the mission, um, you just let Natalia do all the work. Uh, I got cops helping out, but they don't do as much damage as Natalia. But just like that, yeah, you don't need to shoot any of these guys. It just takes longer than usual. Um, and I tried to speed this up as much as I could here, just so you guys get the uh, full gist here, or gist here. So I jump into the spores, and that ends the first part of this mission. But the second, we have to go into the park and deal with all the other ones. So if you pick up these guys, right, because usually they get infected once you approach the babushka. But if you pick up the humans that are next to the babushka, and then move them away and then jump up, the barrel will explode, releasing the spores, but you can just jump into the gas. That way you uh, you don't need to fight any of the infected humans here. Uh, in this, in this uh, like a second portion. Uh, but later on we are going to have to fight some of them, but I'm just showing you here that if you just uh, PK the people away from them, you can just jump right into the spores without having to fire a shot. Um, but the last one, regardless of what you do uh, with the last... With the last uh, babushka, it'll already be exploded once you get there. Um, like that, like that right there. Uh, I, I didn't even get close, they were already infected, so I guess Crypto was just too late in this scenario. Um, so that resulted in me having to deal with all these infected humans here. Um, so what I did here was I body snatched a police officer, and I called in some backup, just like uh, with the Orange Chav one. I needed some soldiers to help us out again, because Natalia wasn't around just to murder all the infected humans this time and the police officers here they almost do they do little to no damage to the infected humans so we gotta let the soldiers do it but the soldiers got a weapon that they didn't use last time and that was grenades as you can see it's a one hit kill on these guys but as you can see that cop was stupid and ran right into the into the spores so that's something if you try this challenge yourself you need to remember you gotta Anytime these infected humans get killed, you gotta make sure you jump into the spores, like, immediately. Um, to- or just move all the humans away, otherwise you'll have to- it'll do nothing. For you. And in this, it was kinda like a glitch or something. Um, luckily the military were- or everybody was shooting at these spores and not me. I was running into the spores, but it wasn't doing anything. So I had to run away here. Um, and luckily after a while it just kinda like, went away. They did enough damage to it. Um, so after that, um, after that, like, I guess, portion of the mission, um, at every single gate, um, every single gate will have a batch of infected humans you need to deal with, and I died there on my way there, so I had to call in more backup. Um, so in this case, some nice soldiers will spawn in the middle of the park if you put it on red alert, and these soldiers are perfect to deal with these infected humans here because, uh, they throw grenades, and for some reason they didn't throw grenades, uh, during the orange Child boss fight which would have made it a thousand times easier as you can see there that soldier took two infected humans out with one frag which is pretty sweet um but then but then he like ran away so i had to grab some more in but as you can see it, it just takes a while um you can deal with every single infected human without having to fire a single shot yourself which is awesome and then there's more down by the uh by the west gate here that you gotta deal with. And I brought a soldier, but he was outgunned, so I needed to bring him in some backup. Um, cause I, if memory serves me correctly, he does get slaughtered. So yeah, I had to get some more troops in to deal with these guys, and... Um, this challenge just kinda makes it take longer than usual, cause usually you can just use the anal probe here and just deal with all these dudes. 
um, like in seconds almost. You can just use the anal probe to disinfect them, but in this you actually have to use, or the, I guess the humans have to use their own defenses here to deal with the, the Russian plot. Um, and then the final part of this mission is the, uh, them are, they're all at the Soviet embassy, so I really sped this up because I don't think you guys, you guys kind of get the point at the, or get the point right now. Um, so I'm just showing you all their deaths at this point so you don't have to watch this fed up version of this. Um, one of the spores actually got out there, and so I, I left him there, but these guys killed him, so I ran in. But then the weirdest part happened here, which I, <laughs> I don't know how they killed him. Um, but I guess the spore was just there, um, and I just ran into it. I'm not sure how that happened, but that was the second mission done, um, with, uh, with no shots fired at all. Um, and now the third mission here, I, I left it in its entirety, but really sped up, it's from Russia with guns. Um, this mission, when I was little, I always had a ton of trouble with. It's the first escort mission, I guess, of the game. Um, and you gotta escort Natalia through basically all of Elbion, uh, so for this, what I, as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm not firing at my gun at all here, but I'm just knocking the KGB agents down. Um, that was my, my main, I guess, tactic here. Um, and Talia's got to kill all these guards, all these agents for me here, but if I can just keep knocking them on the ground, they can't attack. So you, if you actually shoot at them, I mean, yeah, they're attacking, but if you just knock them over... They can't really do any damage to Natalia, as you can see in this clip. I know it's really fast-forwarded, but as you can see, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not firing any shots, and I, I just left this in its entirety so people don't think maybe I cheated on this one because I always kind of struggled with this mission when I was younger and thought it was kind of a bitch. Um, some other tactics I try to use here was I try to use the protect on some of the soldiers just so that's one less person shooting at Natalia. Um, but Natalia had other plans and decided to shoot all the dudes I did that to. But after like a minute or so of this fast forwarding here, we're almost at the saucer part. And you might be thinking, viewer, well, how are you going to get through the saucer part now? Don't you have to blow people up or suck them up or whatever? Uh, no, you don't. Um, for the saucer part, as we're about to get into here, um, you don't have to shoot anybody. You just have to make sure Natalia doesn't get killed by all the tanks. And I'm not sure why uh, why tanks would be shooting at uh, a car, and how uh, Natalia's car is so resistant. If you think about the game logic here, it doesn't make any sense. But as you can see from the clip, I'm not abducting anybody. I mean, I'm, I'm using the abducto beam to move the humans and stuff, but I'm not sucking them into the vault, because I thought that was kind of cheating for the challenge, because that would be like considered using a saucer tool to kill someone. Um, but here, yeah, you, you just move all the humans out of the way. I'm not sure how the how the humans survive getting thrown up like a couple hundred feet into the air and shit like that, but uh, but they somehow do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, all you have to do on this one, it's I, I thought it was actually really easy compared to the last two missions where you have to use all the humans to fight all the infected humans. You just move people out of the way, and Natalia does most of the work for you. Um, and just like that, the third mission in Elbion's done without firing any shots at all. So that moves us on to the fourth mission in which we are betrayed by Ponsonby. Um, in this mission, the Majestic File, the first part, what you're going to want to do is just free love, get a disguise, and you can just waltz past all the guards and meet Pox in the park, in which he'll fix your weapons. But we don't really need him to fix our weapons because we have the power of uh, all, uh, all of Ponsonby's men to help us out. So for this, I just wanted to, I showed this whole clip kind of in its entirety too, the Ponsonby fight, because this is the next boss fight of the game, and we can't fire any weapons, so um, the, we're going to use the same tactic we've used with all the other, uh, with the other fights we've had to do so far with the infected humans, and that's uh, mind controlling one of his men to do our bidding for us, and as you can see, this brave soldier does a ton of damage to Ponsonby before he finally dies, which is pretty sweet. And another tactic we can use for this is, uh, if you see those, uh, those armored cars and shit, um, the armored cars are really, like, it's low on health, I use that later, like, he, you can make Ponsonby blow himself up here if we walk by him, because he's just camping out by that car. Um, here, and I'll show it in a, in a second here. I'm just waiting to recharge, um, but yeah, you just gotta, oh, and I showed this, because look how cool that was. The, the missile just comes in and blows up both cars and does some damage to Ponsonby. 
Um, so yeah, so as you can see, it, it, it's, it makes it a much more pain in the ass to beat these missions without firing any shots, but it is doable. As you can see, you just gotta call in some military dudes to shoot pawns and be, give them a much uh, more painful death than he usually would have got. And I, I really like this one too because it's just another missile right to pawns and bees face. Another RPG, it goes Those do a ton of damage to the bosses. Um, and in this, I couldn't mind control any of uh, the the secret agents here because I'm not using uh, gene blends in this challenge either. So that puts us at quite a disadvantage here in fights like this. Because it would make things much easier if I could just throw these tanks that started shooting my guy around. Uh, but it would make it much easier. And then we only had, like, I think, one more soldier here I could mind control. In which this brave, <laughs> this brave soldier here, he actually stood his ground for quite a bit against Ponsonby. He took uh, tank blasts. Um, and the one, oh, the one tactic I didn't use enough was I could have done the same tactic with Orinchov and just make Ponsonby dance it off. Um, but this soldier with the pistol ends up getting murdered by a Ponsonby. So I had to go outside the park, grab another soldier, and I wanted a rocket to finish him off. So this soldier here hits him with an RPG and finishes the challenge. The fourth mission is done just like that. And that brings us on to the fifth uh, fish, fifth mission. So the first thing you have to do is take out all the security cameras around the perimeter. And there you can see I tried throwing bodies and stuff at the things, but there's mines scattered all over the Soviet embassy here. So you can use all these mines. I skipped some of them just so you don't you get the idea. Uh, you can use these mines here to take out all the cameras without shooting a gun. So you just use their own weapons against them. Um, so the next part of this mission, you have to go around the back and destroy the uh, Revelade dump. Um, and luckily for us, they placed a bunch of barrels just right next to all of them, like explosive barrels that you can just PK and blow up. Um, here I almost died, so I had to like run away here. And there's barrels on the other side of that fence there you can just use just to blow that last one up. Um, the next part of the mission might you might think would be hard uh, without any weapons here, but as you can see from these clips here, you, you need to kill a bunch of KGB agents and destroy their cars to get the distract meter up. Um, so you can just make it through the whole thing without even firing your own shots. And the funny part, this last one, I don't even know what I did. Look, I'm tiptoeing and it just goes up. I, I didn't do anything there, so I had no idea what happened there. I didn't shoot anybody or anything like that. Um, so the next part of the mission, you need to take out the power supply. So I just body snatched this KGB agent up here. And then just jumped off, yeeted the agent off the roof here, and you can just you can shut it down with a human here, just like that. And then the final part of the mission, just like the end of the rock, is destroy the KGB agent base. And luckily for us, there's a bunch of uh, SAM sites located around, so you can just use the SAM sites to shoot rockets right at the building, and it actually does damage to the buildings. Um, and it does just enough damage just to take it out. You just need to guide the missiles right into it just like that and just like that the fifth mission is done without firing any shots at all um so as you can see uh, the next episode we're going to be going to takoshima and as you can see we made it through all five main story missions in Elbion without firing a single shot so in the next episode we'll be going through uh, takoshima to see if we can't do the same um, so I hope my editing was alright in this episode, and I'm sorry it took like, I think, four, or no, I think it was seven months or something to get this out. Um, I've been really busy with school and all, so I'll try to keep getting them out as I can. And I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.